You know, if a young person's still in school, what should they prioritize? Further education and uh, university is not for everybody. What I do say is everybody should do uh, the minimum education amount that their law of their country asks them to do. Definitely do that. You know, don't drop out of school altogether. You need to have an education. After that, you can still have an education, but it might not just be set in a classroom. A lot of people think that when entrepreneurs say, go and start a business, they're not, they're saying, you know, don't get an education. No, get an education, but there's different kinds of education. So you can go and work for somebody and be working for them and reading books, learning a subject. You're still getting an education. For instance, you could go to school until you're 16 years old, and then you could think, oh no, I want to earn some money. Then you could go and work at, at an accounting firm, apply at an accounting firm or go to college. And then while at this accounting firm, you could be reading books on business and anything else that you want to do. Yeah, because you're learning on the job, you're getting paid and you should be motivated if you're thinking, you know what, I've got a long term goal. If you're at school and you want to start a business after leaving, it's still going to be hard. You need to go and work for the people. What if you're at school and you want to start a business? Then you get your parents or somebody older to help you start it. If your parents don't have knowledge about starting a business, go and ask somebody who does. You know, you can simply go into your local shop and ask the shop owner, oh, no, this is a business. You know, I want to start some kind of business. What advice would you give them? See what they say. Or you can now go online and start finding people who will guide you about businesses. Look around, look for businessmen, ask them. You'll be surprised at how much people want to help other people who are interested in starting a business. You know what? Because everybody says they want to start a business, not many people take action. So when somebody does take action, entrepreneurs who are already in business love that and they do love to help people. There's YouTube and there's lots of guys in their 20s and they're already millionaires. Sometimes those guys are not telling the truth. I've seen some adverts, right? And the guy's like, yeah, I do this and I do that and I make all this money. He's making all that money. Why is he running ads to make you buy his course if he's making all that money? Shouldn't he be just concentrating on business and compounding it? Well, my theory on that is he's trying to sell you his course because that's where the money's coming from. And even the guys who do make millions in their 20s or early 20s. They're outliers. Basically, it's not like the majority of the people could go and do that and become millionaires. They are absolute outliers. Mark Zuckerberg, outliers. The guys who own Google, outliers. You know, all in their 30s, they were all billionaires. Good for them, but they're outliers. You know, to be in the top 1% of people your own age, that's what you should be aiming for. You should be looking, okay, top 1% at 18, what are they doing? Top 1% at 21, what are they doing? Top 1% at 30, what are they doing? 40, what are they doing? And then you're trying to be in that top 1% because that's achievable, right? Because for every 100 people you see of your age, what is that one person doing? That's very achievable. Now me trying to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to compete with Mark Zuckerberg. That's highly unlikely because he's an outlier. Good on him for doing it. I wish I could do it, but you know, it's highly unlikely. How did you build a team in the beginning and how to build a solid structure? You know, whenever you start a new company or a new business, what I've found is that you need to A, wear all the hats yourself. So what you do is you start a company, you need to do as much as you can at first, as much as you can yourself. So you need to be the CEO, the accountant, everything, right? You'll need an accountant at the end of the year, but you know, do the accounting, the books, just about everything, answering emails, secretary, and all of that. Now, how do you build on that? First of all, right, I would recommend just getting an assistant, an assistant that does all the tasks that you don't want to do. Like, you know, send out this 100 emails to these clients one by one, personalizing it. It's a mundane thing. It doesn't need you. You can get your assistant to do that. Number two, if you were doing some kind of startup, right, that needed some technical skills or did need some experts and you got funding for this or you just thought, oh, I want to give somebody some shares and they will help me build this, then you would go and find the best person possible. Let me explain it in the case of you come up with an app idea and you think, oh, I'm going to make this up. And then you think you are going to get a low level person who can barely make apps to help you make it. You know what? You're better off going to find a person who could make apps properly, speedily, understand the whole ecosystem and just say to them, look, can I pay you a little bit of money or can I give you a share of the company? Let's make this together. Because you know, when you're making something in the beginning, having the high level people gets things moving faster instead of you having to motivate them and, you know, start 
doing everything for them and you know having to give them a push but on the other hand if you haven't got any money and your idea is not great and nobody wants to join you then you have to hire somebody and just pay them and just make sure they're good you've just got to talk to a lot of people you've got to interview a lot of people you know i used to hear this thing about hire slow fire fast and right now i've come to believe in that you do hire slow hire slowly for skilled jobs right if you've got somebody that a lot of people can do you just interview 20 30 40 people pick the best one you know with your gut feeling get them in if they're no good within like a month or two get rid of them because they're costing you money and the whole business is going to die if you're like i don't want to sack this person because i've now hired them don't just go and hire the first person that you find you've got to talk to a lot of people treat everybody fairly you know the way you treat people is the way your team are going to treat each other yeah if you're horrible to them there's no way they're going to be nice to each other do you get it so i always say to all my team please thank you and i always try to think i need to treat them like i would want them to treat me if they were my boss